Hello, and welcome to Darksiders 2, with the punnily titled Definitive Edition. I bet somebody on their marketing team was so proud of that. Uh, we're going to start a new game, and as opposed to the first one, the Warmaster Edition that we've just finished, um... We're just going to play this one on normal because it's a much bigger game and I don't want to spend forever on some of the more awkward there can be no life bosses. Without order, good, evil, darkness, light. There must be balance in the universe. This fleshes out some of the Such story. Is the decree of the Charred Council, an on the first game. body charged by the Creator to preserve the very fabric of existence. But the balance has been broken. Mm -hmm. Even now, Earth smolders in ruin, fallen to the demon lords, and the destroyer carves a new kingdom amongst his mighty chosen. Some say the horseman war triggered the apocalypse, that he rode to Earth unbidden and doomed all of mankind. But what of the other horsemen? Fearless enforcers of the Council's will. What a fury, strife, and death. To know those names, you must first know another. Nephilim. A cursed union of angel and demon. The Nephilim had countless realms to preserve and burned them to ash. But four amongst them grew weary of the slaughter and feared their conquest would imperil the balance. And so a truce was made. The four would serve the council in exchange for unimaginable power. Thus were the dreaded horsemen formed. And the riders' first task was to purge their own brethren from creation, to annihilate the Nephilim and Kill them all. their souls. Let us now cast our gaze to one amongst the four, not war who lies chained at the Council's feet, professing his innocence. But one who would save his brother, above all else. He has many names. Kinslayer, Executioner, Death. So this game starts in exactly the same place as I believe Dark Souls 3 is due to start with War Chains. To bargain for war's freedom, Death swore that he would resurrect humanity. But he knew not how this might be done. And so Death rode forth into the icy veil. To find the keeper of secrets. Turn the uh, game volume down slightly. Okay, so as we look at this uh, this rather beautiful view, a few things. One of the biggest criticisms levelled against the first game was that you were a horseman of the apocalypse who doesn't actually get a horse uh, over half of the game. So they give you death's horse straight away one of my biggest criticisms of the first game was that the soundtrack wasn't very didn't stand out very much and clearly they realised that for this as well and something I think I said right towards the end of the previous game was that because it was limited to Earth during the apocalypse there wasn't a whole lot that they could do environmentally to really make things stand out. And clearly, we're not on Earth 
anymore. So yes, Death has made a bargain with the Chard Council that they will release war if he can find a way to bring back humanity. This isn't mentioned, of course, in the first game because I don't think they planned this just then. But it still ties in with why Death isn't around. But yeah, the, uh, the controls are exactly the same. So Death's horse is called Despair. And he's got his little raven buddy, who I hardly ever use, to help show us the way. There's, there's no watcher in this. Death does not have or need a watcher. Because he's out of the way, the council don't need to control him. Now, one of the big differences, in fact possibly the biggest difference between this and the first game is if I press the right bumper now, there's no block. It's all about that dodging. Press right button per to dodge enemy attacks. Time you dodge to avoid damage. Death is faster, he's more mobile. And you might have just seen something popping up then. He's still got the awesome insta-kill attacks. Uh, you'll notice that there are loot drops. So the difference in this game to the first one is that there are loot drops. Uh, and one of the biggest criticisms about this game Um, was that it's a bit too RPG in the sense that actually the loot drops you spend a, lot, a bit too much time in the menu and not enough time actually in the game the dark fortress but yeah after the the kind of gritty grimy but still stylized and colorful uh, version of earth that we got in the first game uh, this was uh, a very interesting and refreshing change. Find a way to save war. Now here's something that uh, war certainly couldn't do. Death can wall run, because of course he can. He is agile and he is nimble and he will come for you. And also, health potions are easier to get hold of. But yeah, they, they definitely improved the... the climbing. Because War wasn't very good at that. Another thing that they've done in this is that not only is the loot, but it actually... It, it is actually reflected on Death's character model. You can enable auto loot by changing the auto collect checkbox. So you should see. Yeah, see it changes colour. So you can customise Death's appearance as you go through the game if you want to. A lot of the puzzles.
in this game involve traversal. You can enable auto loot, and in fact, at the start of the game, when really you want to get cash, because you need actual currency in this game. You can see the currency down in the bottom left hand corner. From what little I have seen of Darksiders 3, it looks like the combat is going to be slightly slower than Deaths, but faster than Wars. Death can't jump about on these, or dodge about on these like War could, simply because he climbs faster anyway. Hmm. This looks suspiciously like an arena, doesn't it? Oh, hello. Death is much more nimble than more. And his dodge move actually works. And he's also got a cool Reaper form. Which he can't use right at the start, but he does gain access to. There are a variety of different secondary weapons that he can use. I barely use any of them, if I'm honest. This lift has seen better days. Woo. But this whole place has seen better days. Oh, yeah. Can that. Uh wall jump
so yeah he is just a lot more mobile and it makes the gameplay faster and for a lot of people more interesting plus it's kind of cool getting to play as death Hammer does a lot of damage, but it's very slow. Generally speaking, the slower secondary weapons are good against the big bosses, um, but not quite as useful as the scythe that I found from Dark Siders 1 in crowd controlling. <gasps> but, uh, death be nimble, death be quick. Death be jumping all over the place. <laughs> death often be falling to his death. Um, <laughs> Now, one of the differences between Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition and the, the original version is that they changed the lighting engine uh, as well as upping all the, the textures and stuff. Um, and weirdly enough, this particular view is one that actually suffers. It looked better originally. It was more blue. But generally speaking, the game as a whole does look better than it originally did. Are there the shadows still? Mess up. So this is the Crow Father. I need your help. I helped you once before, horseman. Look at me now. How I curse that day. How I curse you. Careful, Crow Father. I'm not here to put you out of your misery. Not yet. I know why you've come. Your brother, the one called War, he's been imprisoned by the Trout Council and awaits their judgment. He does. For dooming the Earth, for mankind's extinction. Why should I care about your brother's fate? Because you know the truth. Your secrets can save him. <laughs> the Council will condemn War. Strip him of power, let him rot in oblivion, to hide the truth. My secrets cannot prove his innocence. No, indeed. Horsemen. No, but they can help me to erase the crime. Bring mankind back from extinction. Madness. If it's madness, who better to show me the way? Death has a sense of humor. Exist. You will find it here. The Tree of Life. Let me pass. Not yet. That which you gave me. You will take it back. In exchange for its secrets, you agreed to keep the amulet. No. The voices, they curse and threaten without end. They cry to return. You must destroy it. I cannot. You annihilated their flesh. Why do you guard their souls? Open the portal. You will not pass while I live. So be it. So those are the souls of the Nephilim, which death reaped but did not destroy. Trapped in eternal torment. Do you wish to join them? And what of war? Would you kill your brother to save your precious balance? He is innocent. Are you so certain? Yes, because we played the first game. 
speaking of war. This is not war, obviously. Ow. Not my war. Ow. They actually uh, use. Bye. Yeah. That is one thing that the uh, the bigger weapons do do quite well. They've got a charge attack. Just a lot of damage. Yeah. But it wasn't really war. It was an illusion. Silly crow father. But he's got what he wants. Death is savage. Ew. Open the portal. Uh. Your secrets die with you, old fool. My secrets, but not yours. Uh oh. No. So the souls of the Nephilim are no longer held prison in that amulet, but uh, in our very flesh and bone. The Good times. The worlds of our universe swirl in an endless abyss. Many worlds ravaged by time or conflict are swallowed by the abyss, returned to the nothingness from which they were formed. But others linger for eternity on the brink of annihilation. That creation might be balanced with destruction. And in the final moment of battle, death was banished to one such world in the autumn of its life, yet not far from the edge of darkness. Had death been sent to his doom, that answer would be found in the horseman's future and in his past. Hello. Be still, horseman. You are wounded. Don't touch me. Your arrival here is a bad omen. Yes. It troubles me greatly. Old one, there's more trouble ahead if you don't start making <laughs> sense. Where is the tree of life? Life? <laughs> this world is dying, lad. Choking on chaos and corruption. We can do little to stop it. Soon, the great tree too shall perish, and with it, the last of my people. Is that not what brought you here, Pale Rider? I seek the tree. Your chaos and corruption don't concern me. Are you sure, sure about that? <laughs> it seems... Smash! <laughs> I do like that. 
You fight well, but this corruption can't be beaten with a blade. Seek out I wasn't using a blade. Ask her about the fire of the mountain. Help her, and she will help you reach the tree. As for me, I must return to my work. So there are dialogue choices. And who are you to command a rider? I am a maker, older than even the Charred Council. These hands have laid the foundations for many worlds. But that was long ago, and now they but hardly know the touch of stone. Are you not curious as to why I seek the tree? The tree, we can see in the background. I question one of the four, but yes, tell me. I must restore humanity to redeem war. Heaven and hell battle upon the shattered earth. All creation trembles, and at the center of it all stands your brother. He is innocent. I never said he wasn't. The tree holds power over life and death. If you would resurrect humanity, then you are headed in the right direction. Be warned. A dark presence dwells now within the tree, and the path is barred by corruption. So this entire the story of this entire game is based on the the irony. Level up. Skill point awarded. Uh You've leveled up. Every level grants, grants a skill point, which is used to purchase new abilities. So we have a skill tree in this game. Uh, and you get two trees, really, that you can work towards. You get the Harbinger, which is a melee-focused tree. And you get Necromancer, which is more of a magic-focused tree. And I quite like... The magic focused. Yeah, we've got we've got a kind of radial menu um, this time, which makes up for the the issues that people had with equipping items and stuff in the first game. Death doesn't need to punch chests in like war does. So yes, the irony. Death's mission is to bring life in this game. Which is not one of those things that I, I think is pointed out in the game. But the environments are much bigger and really well designed. There's a definite kind of comic booky feel to them. Which isn't really surprising considering Joe Mad did the concepts. And he's a comic book artist. So this is our initial hub area. And it is generally worth destroying all this stuff. Because there's cash, potions. And so on. Hidden all about. Hello. The Reaper. It's about time you came. The Makers are dying, and our realm. We few are all that remain. A warrior's life is never easy, old one. Aye, not easy, but simple. I always saw my end with blade in hand, a field of enemy dead before me. And what glorious end awaits you hiding behind these gates? <sighs> you cannot fight corruption. Nor can you harm it. You can only kill those it has claimed. Every blow I strike against corruption is a blow against my own people. Muse on that, Ryder, before you mark me as a coward. Right, so this guy offers us two options. We can fight him, 
uh, which is kind of challenging. Or we could train. Uh, so all of the moves are bought from Thane. Actually, you know, not all of the moves. The initial set of moves are bought from Thane. There's actually another trainer later on that you can meet. Um, but we get the first one for free, and you'll notice that the others are all reasonably. So Thane showed you a new move, Harvest of Revenge, to help you on your journey. You can purchase additional moves by selecting the train option, use Harvest of Revenge by pressing the right bumper, which is forward evade, and X. So this is the same as our... Um, harpoon Strike from the first one. It's, it's performed the same way. This uh, dragon statue over here is the mailbox uh, and was used in the original version of the game to pick up mails and stuff, um, but the servers don't work for it anymore and all of the things that you get via mail have been added into the game in various places. Uh, one of the things they did in the Definit Definitive Edition was uh, roll everything into the actual game and move some things around as well as rebalance some bits and pieces. It wasn't just an engine change. Right. Hello. Maker's beard. The rumors are true. Yes. A horseman in the We've forest. been here all of five minutes. The name's Alia, and that's my brother Valis. We are the keepers of this forge. Though I reckon that means less now than once it did. This is a Maker's Forge. Yes. Nay, the Maker's Forge is lost to us, silenced by the hands of corruption. Mm. But in its depths, we once crafted the dark towers of hell and the cities of heaven. Now you make trinkets. <laughs> and you, one of the four, now seek the aid of the Makers? I guess we've all fallen from mm -hmm. high places. Arcania seeking the tree, and your elder speaks of fire. What is it? Aye, the fire of the mountain, the Stonefather's blood. It once flowed into our forge, as did the tears. Both imbued our craft with incredible power, the heart and the soul of stone. But corruption has taken them, and now our forge is silent. Why does this concern me? The way to the tree is lost, barred by corruption. You can no more leave this place than we. Restore our forge, and the tree can be reached. I don't follow your reasoning. We are makers, not warriors. But we are not without our weapons. Before the forge was lost, we crafted a mighty creature of soul and stone. A colossus to fight this corruption. But to awaken him requires a maker's key. And we need our forge to craft one. Will you help us? Yes. What is this cauldron? A temple built in the shadow of Stonefather's Peak. There, the fire of the mountain was harnessed and passed into our forge. Ride east of town, ride through the charred pass, and towards the cindery peak of the Stone Father. There, you will find the cauldron. Man of no words, your brother. <laughs> but hardly silent. His voice is the ring of the hammer and the roar of the white flame. Yes, he works while you talk. <laughs> I may have need of a blade. Is your need greater than ours, horseman? I think not. We fight for the survival of our realm and our kin. Prove worthy, and mayhaps we can do business. Mayhaps. So she will become a weapons and armor store, eventually. But we need to prove ourselves with this uh, first quest. But the look at the scale of this place. There's the tree of, li uh, of life in the background. One of the best things about this game from an aesthetic standpoint is the fact that it's stylized so it won't age as badly as some kind of more realistic looking games. We've been awaiting your arrival, Horseman. Your shadow has long hovered over this realm. Many know the Reaper, old one, but I don't know you. We are the builders of this world. 
but corruption seethes at its heart and destroys in days what we shaped over eons. Adar does his best to soothe our pain, but our souls yearn for only one comfort, death. We are without hope. Tell me, shaman, what is corruption? What indeed? I only know what I fear it to be. That, that corruption is not an answer. Is hate given life, and that hate does not come from trees or stones, but from ourselves. You despair, old one, and yet raise life from the earth. I am a shaman, bound to this task even as our days darken. We are as the vines, coming to root, then to flower and then to decay, dropping seeds upon the dust, a circle everlasting. I cannot stop it, nor can I stop you. Tell me more about the Tree of Life. The forest around the tree has been corrupted. It hungers. You cannot reach the tree, not with breath still in you. The path of a brother troubles you. It is your past, but also your future. Ah, more Muria, the Maker Shaman, gave you this pauldron. The path of a brother troubles you, she said. It is your past, but also your future. Um, this was a DLC item, originally that you just got and it has been added into stone wood iron these are the gifts of the makers horsemen do you ever doubt your future no so one like yourself would set out to change a fate that displeases him that is a long and dangerous path even for death himself how is that your concern shaman only that i am skilled at crafting talismans if you gather the proper materials and return them to me, I'll make a potent talisman to aid you on your journey. What do you require? Stalker's bone, mordant dew, and carven stone. It is not a simple charm. Where can I find them? Somewhere in the Forge Lands. I rarely leave Tristone, but that pup Khan is always out exploring. He can tell you more, no doubt. Indeed. And she's there also a shop that we can use. Browse to buy health potions and to buy a variety of talismans so she's given us our first quest side quest at that so let us head out into the open world so what do we know so far Death needs to get to the Tree of Life. Death can't get to the Tree of Life because the Tree of Life is blocked off by corruption. The Makers were creating a giant Colossus weapon to fight the corruption, but the corruption got their forge before, got to their forge and cut off their power supply, I suppose, before they could finish it or activate it. We need to activate it. The fire is more valuable than I, horseman. You should make haste to the temple. Fire alone won't save your realm. You speak of the forge. Why? Without the fire and the tears of the mountain, without the forge itself, we have no means to clear the forest and reach the tree of life. What then? Our power is over creation, yours over death and despair. You are Nephilim, Lord of Destruction, Perhaps in that there is hope. In death there is life. How old is the forge? It is as ancient as the realm itself, and perhaps even older. It is said the forge was the first thing we makers built, that in its depths we shaped entire worlds. Oh, yes, need to speak to uh for now. Orsman, you'll find not that way. But trouble. But we like you trouble. Must for your kin, old one. For mine, I ride to the cauldron. Well, if you fancy your corruption waste deep, that's as good a place as any. You know, there's a reason this gate is here. And if you were a friend, mm. I wouldn't have let you pass. But then, <laughs> who is friend to death? Have you wisdom to share, or was it long since not <laughs> loose in battle? Oh, wisdom ain't like teeth. I've plenty left. Enough to stay clear of the cauldron. The ancients filled it with right nasty traps. Oh, good. But traps. one so clever as yourself will surely elude them. Okay. Out we go.
Thanks, Stain. Right fast, death. My realm. Yes, it does. Okay. Oh, forget it does that. There are many, many things in this game to see and do and collect, but there is our first major obstacle. Corruption bars the way to the tree. And it's going to be a fair while, actually before we really get to do anything about that. We're gonna make our way to the cauldron next time. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Remember to ring the bell to be notified when new videos go live. And until next time, toodle pip.